Over to you. Thank you. So I'm going to present you today Fatianda Terra, which is an open source tool for geophysics. Uh, first, a little bit of interaction. Um, so as as I mentioned, I'm a physicist and PhD in geophysics from Argentina. I'm currently working as a postdoc researcher at the University of British Columbia under the supervision of Lindsay Hege. Uh, during my PhD, I've been researching uh, new methodologies for processing and inverting uh, gravity and magnetic field data. And I'm currently working on characterizing the carbon capture potential of ultramafic rocks with joint inversion of gravity and magnetics. And besides my research, i one of the core developers of the Fatian Dera projects. So Fatian Dera is a community-driven project with the goal of providing uh, open source Python tools for geophysics that are well-documented, well-tested, and they are easy to use. It started in 2010 uh, as part of the PhD of uh, thesis of Leonardo Vieda in Brazil. And it was born as a single Python library called Fatiando that offer tools for processing spatial data, forward modeling gravity and magnetic fields, uh, performing some geometry inversions, and it also had some toy problems for, that were useful for, for teaching. Um, so this is a, a screen capture of the website of the documentation of the latest version of that uh, library. Uh, you can still visit it at legacy.fatiendo.org if you're interested in it. So in 2018, um, we decided that our tools needed to be modernized. Uh, we have to st uh, step away from the old Python version into the new Python 3 version. And also by then, all the scientific Python ecosystem, and in particularly the geoscientific Python ecosystem, had grown a lot. So we wanted to integrate our tools with the rest of the, of the ecosystem. So that's why we decided to split the project into smaller libraries with narrower scope and goals. So currently we have Verde, which is a library for spatial data processing and interpolation with a machine learning flavor. We have our Harmonica, which is all about processing and modeling potential field data. We also have Bool, which is a tiny library that allows us to define some reference ellipsoid like the WGS84 and allow, allow us to perform some coordinate conversions and compute normal gravity as well. Then we have Pooch, which is a very nice tool for downloading and caching data from the web. And Ensayo offers some curated open license data sets uh, that are useful for teaching, giving tutorials, and also for just probing our code. And Ensayo actually uses Pooch under the hood, so we can see how they integrate together. So I'm going to jump to show you some examples of what you can do with our tools. Uh, the first example I want to show you is how we can process some gravity data with it. So let's start by downloading some ground gravity data over Southern Africa. Uh, we have a data set in Ensayo, so we can use it to, to download it uh, with a very simple function called fetch Southern Africa gravity in this case. And this will, will download a CSV file that we can load with Pandas, which is a very well-known uh, Python library for managing tabular data. So here on the left, you can see uh, the whole data set. And for this little example, I'm going to focus on the Bushwell Igneous Complex. In Pandas, it's really easy to crop our data to, to the desired region. That is the one I'm showing you on the right. So the first step I'm going to do in this workflow is compute the gravity disturbance. So I need to first uh, compute the normal gravity that the reference ellipsoid generates on every observation point. So I can use bool to define a WGS84 ellipsoid and use the normal gravity method to compute it on every observation point. Once I have the normal gravity, I can remove it from the observed gravity and obtain the gravity disturbance. Here is a plot of what I got. We know that gravity disturbance is highly affected by topographic masses, so the next step in my workflow would be to remove the terrain effect from it. And here we can use harmonica to define a 3D model of the topography from a DEM and assign densities to each one of the prisms, the rectangular prisms that form that 3D model. 
And once we do that, we can get this 3D model uh, I'm showing you today. And in the middle, you can actually see all the observation points with the gravity disturbance we have. And one thing to notice is that I added some padding to the topography to account for border effects while computing the terrain effect. So the next step would be to take that 3D model and forward model it to compute the gravity field that it generates on every observation point. Once we have the terrain effect and remove it from the gravity disturbance we had before, we can get the Bouguer disturbance, which should looks like this. You can see that it has a lot of negative values, and this is due because the, the Bouguer disturbance is highly affected by very deep uh, sources around the Moho. So in the next step, what I want to do is to separate the regional from the residual field. There are a couple of ways we can do this. Uh, I'm, I'm choosing to show you one way we, we, can, we can tackle this problem, is to define very deep accumulant sources, point sources, beneath the, the observation points. And these very deep sources will generate or reproduce the regional field in our data, only the smooth, long wavelength field. Once we have the regional field, we can remove it from the Bouguer disturbance we had before and get the residual gravity, which it looks like this. So now we know that the signal in, this, uh, in, in the residual gravity it's affected by the, the shallower sources. But this way of representing the data and visualizing it is it's not very easy to interpret it. So the next step I'm going to show you is, is how we can grid um, the residual gravity using equivalent sources. Now I'm going to define another set of equivalent sources much shallower than the ones I used before. And use the grid method in the Achillean sources to produce a regular grid with the desired spacing and at a constant height. So here on the left, I'm showing you the, the, the grid I got of the residual gravity. And you can see that all the heights there highly correlate with the geology of the Bushveld Linux complex, and particularly with the location of the intrusions. So just to wrap up the whole workflow, we started from raw observations of the gravity field, and we uh, got to a grid of the residual gravity that we can interpret, and everything with open source tools. So the next example I want to show you is how we can apply FFT-based transformation to regular grids. To do that, I'm going to first download a new data set uh, I will use Ensayo again. This will be a magnetic uh, field data set from the Lightning Creek Seal Complex in Australia. It would download a NetCDF file, which I'm going to load with X-Array, which is a well-known uh, li Python library for managing multidimensional arrays. So here on the left, I'm showing you the location of the grid, and on the right, you can actually see uh, the grid I downloaded. That contains a total field uh, magnetic anomaly. So let's start applying some transformations. Let's start with the reduction to the pole. We can use the reaction to the pole function in harmonica to apply it by passing the inclination and declination angles and the grid we want to transform and basically obtain the reduced to the pole grid. Another transformation we can make to this, and I'm going to apply it to the reduced to the pole grid, is the upward derivative uh, through the derivative upward function in harmonica as well, and get the result. Another transformation I can apply is the upward continuation. Um, it, this function will ask me the desired grid I want to transform, but also the high displacement I want. So if I apply a 500 meters uh, upward continuation, I get the grid that is on the right. So the last example I want to show you is how we can use uh, harmonica to load Oasis Monte GRD files in Python. So let's say I want to study Mount Milligan in British Columbia, and I go to an Archon website that I know they provide open license data sets that I can use. And one thing that an Archon has is that most of the grid products they offer are offered as Oasis Montage GRD files. 
And in order to use them into our Python workflows and with our Python tools, we need to be able to load it. So in Harmonica, we had a load Oasis montage grid function that just takes the file we want to load and creates an X-Array uh, grid that we can use. And for example, we can plot it or we can apply some transformations. For example, this is a total magnetic field data. So if I want to compute the total uh, field anomaly, I need to remove the geomagnetic field. So I can rely on another tool from the Python ecosystem, which is PPI GRF, that allows us to compute the international geomagnetic reference field by defining the date and the locations of the observations. And once I have the IGRF field, by removing it from the uh, the magnetic field grid I downloaded, I get the total field anomaly that looks like this. So you can see that we also offer tools that integrate all these files so we can download freely and in apply our Python tools to it. So who makes Fatiando possible? We have a steering council, uh, which I'm part of, that leads the development and the maintenance of, of the project but we also rely on many contributors from different regions of the world that help us by adding new features, improving the documentation, other, adding more tests to, to our tools, and also bringing new ideas and use cases for our tools to, to be used on. So if you want to learn more about our tools, we have a website, it's fatiando.org. Uh, we have also some resources if you are interested in, in starting to learn Python and especially how to use our tools, you can visit it at uh, fatiando.org slash learn. And I would also like to invite you all to join the conversation. Uh, we do all the development in the open, so we are open to people bringing new ideas. Uh, if you have uh, a requirement or a need for a particular tool in Python that we can help develop, please just contact us and, and we can make this project grow. So visit our website if you're interested in that and thank you very much. Thank you, Santiago. Uh, if anybody has any questions, please go to the back microphones. Yep. Hi, Santi. Thanks for the talk. Really, uh, great to see the, the tool evolve. Like I've used it in the past, but actually I haven't used it in, uh, in a few years now. So I, I have a question on one limitation that I had uh, at the time. Um, so the equivalent source, how does it scale? Because like for gravity data, where we have somewhat sparse station, it works great. But I tried to use it for aeromagnetics, and there was just too many data points. <laughs> Good question. Um, so in two years ago, I published a paper where I developed the gradient boosted equivalent sources that allows you to grid very large data sets. In that paper, we, um, we grab a compilation of ground gravity uh, data from Australia, it was almost two million data points. And we've been able to use the gradient boosted equivalent sources to grid that. And I did that in a like a desktop computer with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So we already have that function. So that was another thing that um, we did the research, but we offered the the functions to apply that research in the project right now. So if you go to a website, look for uh, gradient boosted equivalent sources in the documentation, and you will find the class and how to use it. Awesome, and if I can ask a second question too, like, so you showed the mag transformation, like upward continuation, reduced to pole, et cetera. Is it using an FFT or is it using an equivalent source for the transformation? All of those were using FFT based method, um, but we are working on, so we, th we believe that FFT was really good, like in the 80s and 70s where the computational power for applying more sophisticated stuff was lacking, uh, but we are looking forward to apply equivalent sources to, to do the reduction to a poll in the future. Currently, we don't have it, but we have some students working on it. Um, yeah, I, 
I, but I think it's a good uh, tool to have as a baseline. So having able to apply those transformations very quickly and then if you have a, a more sophisticated method to compare with, with those results. Awesome, thanks. Any other questions? Oh, well, okay. Thank you so much. One more round of applause. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Oh, we have another one. You still have time, so. Uh, a short question. Yes. Uh, when you do your FFT, uh, do you have the tools for grid extensions? Sorry, can you repeat the question? When you process any uh, transformation using FFT, do you, have the, do you include the grid extensions? How, how do you in, uh, include grid extensions? Okay, good question. So we rely on a package, it's called XRFT. Uh, so instead of passing just a grid as a 2D array, that grid is it's, uh, an X-array grid. So it has the 2D um, array holding all the information of the magnetic field, for example, but it also contains the um, the coordinates, the east and north coordinates. So you have a single object that contains all the information, the coordinates and also the data. So you pass that uh, function, you pass that object to an FFT function of XRFT and it handles the application of the grid extension through, through those coordinates. It also checks that you're actually passing a regular grid and not uh, an unstructured grid. That is that answering the question? Okay, thank you. I'll have to look. Okay. I actually, I have a, I have a question myself. Um, okay, so obviously this is uh, this is open source code. Um, is this available? Is this available only through the Fatiano website, or is this available, or is this posted on something like GitHub that other pro that other programmers can see and maybe find holes in the code that you may not may not see? Perfect. Yeah, very nice question. Yeah, we did all the development in GitHub, um, basically in the open, like we open issues and pull requests, if you're familiar with that. Um, and we have all the discussions in there. So you can actually see how we, uh, all the discussion process, even if you're not part of the community, for example. So you can go to GitHub and, and see all the repositories. Uh, you can also download the, fi the, the packages through PIP or Conda is not like you have to clone the repository or download a random zip file from the web. That's awesome, thank okay, you. Okay, thank you.